Well, good morning and welcome to another Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. This is Halloween and I thought about uh, talking about Halloween, but I don't think I want to address the issue today. Uh, I know that a lot of people think, you know, that kids dressing up in their costumes and going trick-or-treating is kind of pagan and heathenistic and, and very evil. And if we allow our kids to go and do that, they'll probably... Uh, begin to worship the devil or get caught up in the occult of some kind. Well, when we were kids, we dressed up as clowns and hobos and monkeys and all different kinds of costumes, just anything we could get together and go out trick-or-treating. And none of my brothers or sisters or myself has ever gotten into devil worship or been caught up in the occult or gotten into any kind of witchcraft. To me, it's just kind of an American tradition and and uh, something that the kids look forward to. And if you don't agree with me, why well, disagree agreeably. But I, I think it's a fun American tradition that we enjoy as kids. And I see the excitement that my grandkids have in enjoying this American tradition. Well, I, like I said, I'm not going to address that issue. Just want to share an experience real quickly here. Uh, when I was pastoring down in Alabama, little town of Cube, Alabama, which is two miles inside the Alabama-Mississippi state line. Mississippi, if you're going to get married, you got a marriage license. You had to wait several days. I don't know just how many days, but there was a waiting period. While Alabama did not have a waiting period, you could buy your license and get married minutes later. And so there are a lot of Mississippi people come over from Mississippi into Alabama wanting to get married. And I lived right on the highway, and we had our church campground sign up, and that caught the attention of many of those people that were looking for a preacher to tie the knot. And uh, I got to where I, I did a few weddings. I didn't particularly enjoy doing that, and there did come a time that I stopped doing it, but my preacher's salary wasn't very much, and I could generally get a, at least a $20 bill out of a five-minute ceremony, so... Uh, at least that part was attractive to me. So I did a good number of weddings of people that just stopped by and wanted the preacher to tie the knot. Well, on this particular day, I'd been tearing down an old house behind the church. We had purchased this old house, used it for Sunday school rooms for a while, and then decided that it'd be better to tear the house, take the dimensional lumber, and build an addition onto the church. And so I was out there, I was supposed to be supervising a couple uh, hired uh, laborers, but I'm not any good at just sitting watching anybody else work, and I pitched right in, and probably working harder than, than the two guys that we'd hired to, to take it down for us. So I was working that hot Alabama summer day, sweat pouring down my face, and, and all of the dirt of that old house that probably was over 100 years old, as we uh, were demolishing it, 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 that dirt just kind of settled down and caked on my sweated face, and I guess I looked kind of like a mud baby. I was just about as black as the two laborers that we had hired to, to demolish the house. And while I was working, a car pulled up in the driveway. Now, I could tell that car had been freshly detailed. Man, it was shiny black, and here stepped a guy out of it, and he was very spiffy. He had probably spent the evening before shining his shoes and pressing his clothes, and I mean that guy was really all dressed up. He come wading carefully through the debris of the of the house that was being demolished, and as he approached me, he said, "We're looking for Reverend Hayton." They told us down at the grocery store that you'd be here, that he would be here, and I hated to say, "Well, you're looking at him," but I confessed that I was Reverend Hayton and asked him what I could do for them. The gentleman said, well, me and my fiance out in the car want to get married. And I said, well, cross the track and go over to the Baptist church. Maybe the Baptist preacher can do it. We've already been over there, he said, and the Baptist preacher's out of town today, and we really want to get married today. Will you marry us? And I said, you don't want uh, me to marry you looking like I look, and I'm not going to quit work and go home and get cleaned up for a five minute wedding ceremony. And uh, about that time, the little lady got out of the car and she picked her way through there. And man, she was dressed up and looking just as like she stepped out of a bridal magazine. 
and uh, came up and asked the, the young man, what's the trouble? And he said, well, here's, this is the preacher, but he don't want to marry us looking the way that he's, that he's looking. And she said, why, well, you look just fine. I said, oh, no, you don't want to look back on your wedding day and think about how that preacher uh, stood before you to tie the knot looking the way he looked. Both of them said, no, it doesn't matter. You look just fine. We'll be happy for you to do the ceremony. So I relented. I said, well, let me go in and wash my hands so I don't get my little ceremony book all dirty. And we went in the church, and I stood in there at the front of the church, and I stood there with my old ragged clothes and my sweat, sweaty, dirty face and my messed up hair. And I said, dearly beloved, we're gathered together here in the sight of God to you. Join this couple in the bonds of holy matrimony. And I got the knot tied. Haven't seen them since. And of course, I probably wouldn't recognize them again if I did see them. That's been over 30 years ago. But I thought of their determination to get married. And I've often wondered if they were as determined to stay married as they were to get married. And uh, you young people that are thinking about getting married and uh, just determined that you're going to do it, you better decide you're going to be determined to stay married as well. Well, that's just a little story I thought I'd share with you today. Uh, let's ask God to bless us throughout the day. Heavenly Father, bless us throughout another day of life. Keep your hand upon us as we love and serve Thee. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks for letting us share that with you. It just came to my mind today, and I thought you might be interested in that little story. Goodbye now.